I've got such an interesting topic to talk about today. It's not interesting in the slightest. It's anti-reflective coating. I want to talk to you about anti-reflective coating on my Omega Seamaster because I've kind of found a fault, but it's not a fault. It's, it's not a fault because it's doing what it should do. It's operating how it should operate, kind of. I guess technically we should call it a characteristic of this watch, but it's something that I haven't noticed before. And I think it's something that we should talk about. Welcome back to Bark and Jack, I'm Adrian, and I was doing some macro photography on my Omega Seamaster. If you do any sort of photography with watches, you'll know it's very common to see uh, marks on the glass that you don't necessarily see with the naked eye, but you see it with the light coming in at a certain angle and you see it through the lens. So it's really normal for me to see marks on a watch, look through a viewfinder, see marks on a watch, and then rub it off or spray it off with um, compressed air but I kept rubbing this mark and it just wouldn't go anywhere. So then I changed focus and focused in on the glass and that's when I saw this. I saw these very obvious scratches on the crystal. Luckily, the crystal itself isn't actually scratched. It's the anti-reflective material that is scratched. I was aware of anti-reflective material scratching and that's the downside of it being on the outside of the crystal as opposed to underneath the crystal. But I thought this stuff would last at least a couple of years, not a handful of months. The scratches are hard to see with the naked eye, but when the light catches it at a certain angle, you can absolutely see it. And so it is noticeable. Now you might think I'm just being ridiculous because this is a tool watch, this is a sports watch. It's supposed to be worn and enjoyed and scratches are just part of having it. I get that, but the way that I see it is this is a tool watch. This watch has features and materials have been used in specific areas for a purpose. For example, the bezel. It's ceramic, not aluminium. It's ceramic so that it stays legible for longer. If it was aluminium with a painted bezel, it would fade over time and therefore not be so legible. Being ceramic with enamel markings, this is pretty much gonna be legible forever. They use stainless steel because it's a hard wearing metal. It's relatively cheap to work with. They use rubber within the gaskets because that's a perfect material to improve water resistance. They then use sapphire crystal because it's a see-through material and it's incredibly hard wearing. It's so scratch resistant that when I hit my Submariner against a brick wall, it's so hard that there was brick dust on the watch, the Sapphire Crystal wasn't bothered. It was pristine, crystal clear. And that's why Sapphire Crystal is used. So why coat the Sapphire Crystal in a material that isn't scratch resistant? I bought this Seamaster back in early December, 2020. So I've had it about four months. It, it has been, my most worn watch, but that kind of translates into reality of being worn, let's say four times a week. Uh, and so uh, four weeks within a month, uh, four times, four times or four months that I've had it. So that's 64 days, let's say. Uh, and at the start of that ownership, when I was in a honeymoon period, let's say I wore it every day. So let's round that 64 days up to a hundred days. So this watch has had a hundred days worth of use out of it. And already it looks like this. I think that's disappointing. I did share photographs of this on Instagram and, and a few people got in contact and suggested that I should go back to Omega. This is classed as wear and tear. And so Omega wouldn't cover this under warranty. Some people mentioned that I should go to the AD and see if the AD would cover the costs of repair. I like that idea and I'd like to think that the AD would do that. However, I bought this on sale. I've already got 20% off this watch, so I can't really see the AD wanting to go above and beyond and going out of pocket. Uh, after me already getting 20% off. Other people have suggested removing the AR coating and I've looked into this and apparently you can do that using something like Polywatch. Polywatch is used to polish acrylic glass. It's basically a very light abrasive. My concern would be just making it worse than what it is already. For me, I'm gonna leave it as it is. It hasn't put me off the watch. It hasn't really damaged my feeling towards the watch. I just feel that it's a bit disappointing. And I also feel like it's something that needs to be raised. It's still a 4,000 pound watch. It's still an amazing watch for the money, but if you're OCD and you like things to be perfect, this is absolutely something that you need to take into consideration. The anti-reflective coating is useful to have on the watch. Uh, and, and as someone, I'm wearing my Explorer, as someone who has watches that has no anti-reflective coating, like on my Explorer, it is a pain in the ass to try and photograph. My old Sabana doesn't have anti-reflective coating on the crystal either. When it's a flat crystal, it doesn't really matter all that much. But when you have a Sabana that has a Cyclops, the Cyclops does have anti-reflective coating on it because it's a dome. 
when you have domed crystal, like on IWC watches, that stuff just reflects everything because it's a dome and because it's just pointing at pretty much all light sources, it's just a reflection magnet. On IWC watches or watches that have domed sapphire crystal, quite often you just get this blue tint on everything. Huh? How am I gonna segue into a plug for the straps that we sell over at barkandjack.shop? I'm probably not gonna do that. It's, it's Watches and Wonders next week and uh, and I've sent in watches out of embargo at the moment. They're gonna be launched next week, so I may as well do a plug about the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, then I think you should. You can't tell what that is, can you? I don't wanna get in trouble. Subscribe. There's some really, really cool shit coming out. As I say, the scratches haven't put me off this watch. I just think uh, I've spoken very highly about it. And I do still feel highly about the watch. I think it's a great watch. And I, I think for the amount of money that you, you spend, you're getting a lot of watch for it. It's still an awesome watch, but I didn't know about this characteristic when I made my previous videos. Um, and I think people need to be aware. I knew anti-reflective coating scratched off. I just didn't know it was a matter of months rather than years. So I think this is a thing that people need to be made aware of. It's also made me appreciate, uh, I'm, I'm gonna say Rolex, because I, I feel like Rolex, Rolex get a lot of hate. A lot of people like bashing Rolex, but I think the thing that people overlook when it comes to Rolex is that they do execute things well. It took them ages to use anti-reflective material on their watches. They do use anti-reflective material on the underside of their watches now, but it took them a long time to actually implement it. So props to Rolex for doing it the right way. You don't get as much benefits as having it on the top side or both top and bottom like Omega do, but you then also don't get the scratching. What do you think? What are your thoughts on one, Omega doing this or watch company doing this and how they should treat it? Or two, what would you do? Would you try and remove the anti-reflective coating? Guys, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you like the style of this video, hit the subscribe button down there. Even if you don't like me, that doesn't matter. Just subscribe because there's some cool shit coming out. If you're on Instagram, give me a follow at Barker and Jack. If you're on Clubhouse, give me a follow there at Barker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. I'll see you guys in a few days. Take care.